Welcome back, everybody, Ice Dogs This Week. Remember, you can find us on Twitter, at Ice Dogs This Week, or on Facebook, facebook.com, slash Ice Dogs This Week. Now, uh, this week's guest, one of the newest Niagara Ice Dogs, defenseman Elijah Roberts. Uh, Elijah, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. So, um, for those of you out there watching, what happens with this show is in the first segment, generally the players we interview are here, um, and they're sitting just offset watching, and... Elijah, you said you had some issues with the first segment yeah. with some yeah. of the hits and misses. So we're going to go through them so that sure, you can tell us good. where we're wrong and why. Um, so let's start with the first one. Six goals in four games. We should be concerned about the offense. Hit or a uh, miss? You got to get hard hit or miss. I think that's a miss. Because? Because I think just in practice, and we got way too much talent on this team. You look at guys like Maximov, Thomas Jones. Cornell, all guys that can put the puck in the net. You look at Tomasino, he's coming along. He's going to start to score a lot. I think just based on the guys we got, we have way too much talent. And if you look at how we were earlier in the season, I think we were scoring five goals a game or something like that through yeah. the first three. So I can see us getting back to that real quick. So that's the real Ice Dogs team to that's you, that one Ice that was team. scoring? Yeah. Hey, and that's the one that agrees with me, yeah. so I like his answer. Yeah, okay. <laughs> all right, the next one. Uh, do you even care about the Silver Wolves, or do you want to skip that one? Uh, it's another team. We're just going to play our game. That's how we focus on every night. Fair enough. Ice Dogs top five defensive team. You'll finish as a top five defensive team. Yeah, I got to... As you know, a defenseman, I, I figure I, that's I gotta go probably... I got to go with what you said. I mean, we got 8D that yeah. could all play anyone with anyone against any line. And I mean, me personally, I think Stevie's probably the best or second best goal in the league. So when you have that, I think it's going to be hard to score against us. Are you enjoying um, playing? You're basically the top pair defenseman now. Um, the last few games you've been with uh, Zach Shank, are, are you enjoying kind of having that um, top line pair role in that defensive situation? Yeah, I'm enjoying it. I mean, anytime you get to play against the top players on the other team, it's a pretty good opportunity. And I mean, as you get older and get to the next level, it's going to be better guys that you're facing against. And I mean, I love playing with Zach. He's pretty physical and he talks a lot on the ice, so it's... I'm enjoying playing with him. You guys are different players, though, right? Yeah, like, your skill different. sets are yeah, different players. Different. I think we kind of go with each other. I mean... Yin and Yang type yeah, situation? Yin and Yang. So, what kind of adjustments have you made to your game since coming into Niagara? Because uh, I've heard from the scouting community that your reads are a little bit better than what they were in Kitchener. Is that a function of playing time or just some sort of adjustment that you've made to your game? Uh, I could say you could say it's a little bit of both. I mean, I've been working a lot with Ted on my defensive game, and just um, there's a lot of communication between the guys. So even those plays where you don't see the guy, you just hear him, and you know the guy's voice. You can just pop the puck there. But um, even over the summer, just working on being more patient and seeing things the other way. I'm watching a lot more NHL games, which is good to see. You see some of the top players there making those plays. So is that one of the you know, we just talked about how you're playing a lot with Zach Shankar. Is that one of those things where you know his voice? So instead of like rotating through different defensive pairings where you'd be like, you could hear a guy say, hey, and you could put it on the tape of the other team. Yeah, with no. Zach, like, you know what his voice yeah, sounds like. You know sure. everything about I him. I think right? maybe with him being an older guy, like almost before every shift, we always say something to each other just about this shift coming up or let's try this here, let's try this, just so we, we're kind of always on the same page. Your skating is always something that we've noticed about you since you came into the league. Yeah, forever. I know, yeah, right? two years yeah. ago, we noticed where, who's this Roberts kid? He can skate. Is that something that just came naturally to you? Because some guys, it just it's a natural thing, or is it something that you really had to work on? Uh, for the most part, it's just natural. I mean, I worked with uh, Barb Underhill for a summer, maybe a little bit longer. She's pretty but, good. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's real good. She's something special, but uh, I've always just skated a lot. So I'd always try new things, even if I fall, just turn, twist, jump, anything, just to kind of get comfortable on my skates. And then uh, Jeremy Bracco was on my team for a couple of years, and he always opens up and does an eagle. So just by watching him, I worked on that a lot, just on my own, and tried to incorporate it into my game. So obviously that is a big part of your game. Um, what are your expectations, let's say, in terms of, offensive points or is your do you find your role is more um 
just to get the puck into the offensive zone, right? There, hockey's kind of changing in terms of, you know, five-man units almost, uh, and, and getting the puck into the offensive zone is is becoming more of a defensive job than necessarily mm-hmm. just that first pass. Yeah. So do you see yourself as, like, offensive in terms of, you know, scoring goals or offensive in terms of rushing the puck? Or, or how do you see yourself? Uh, I think it's a little bit of both. I mean, I, I want to be able to score goals, but also we, we got a lot of skill for it. So if I can get the puck to them and then yeah. maybe give it back... I know uh, I talk a lot with Akil about just quick one touches back to each other and stuff like that. And I, I don't think for points there's a certain goal. I think if you just go in with the mindset of I'm going to play offensively and try and get shots on that. I mean, I try and get at least two shots on that every game. And uh, the more you do stuff like that and move the puck to guys, the points will just come. You wear number 98. And... Mm-hmm. Before this season, the new age in Niagara, numbers yeah. were limited to numbers 1 to 31. Mm-hmm. If they hadn't changed that, what number would you be? Uh, I wanted 23, but... The captain's got it. Yeah, the captain's got it. So that was, that was off the table, no. Out of it, eh? uh, I don't know, actually. I, uh, I thought it was available. Maybe 26. You could have taken that from the Yeah, I could have, I could have taken that from Thomas. You know, I, You're just I don't know. You don't have to pick, right? Yeah, um, Does 98 have meaning to you? or? Honestly, I think I just picked it one year. I think I was, for some reason, I wanted to be the highest number. And yeah. you can't wear 99, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then I just stuck with it my whole life. So you got it. All right, I got to ask you one quick one because uh, we're running out of time. We got to go to commercial, but it's something I think we need to bring up because I just thought it was super cool um, with my background and obviously what I learned about your background. So the, the Niagara Ice Dogs had an autism game where the jerseys um, were donated to Autism Niagara. You said whoever auctioned or paid for your jersey, you would uh, match a donation of 20%. Mm-hmm. Um, so just quickly tell everyone kind of why you did that, the background to that story. Oh uh, Yeah, my parents, they've worked with kids with autism for over 25 years. Also, like, troubled teens, uh, teens who are always getting in trouble and mm-hmm. have uh, like problems with that. So it's kind of been really significant to my life. I mean, my parents would pull me out of school and I'd spend time with the kids and just being able to see like how special some of these kids are, like the, the things they can do that like you wouldn't never think. Like uh, I said in the, another interview that one of the kids can tell you when any of the Olympics were, another one could like draw stuff, like if he, he, he'd see it and then he'd yeah, be- Yeah, he's seen it once. Yeah, he's wow. seen it once, he can just draw it like and it'd look really good. And yeah. Just, uh, they've taught me a lot about perspective of life too. and. I, don't know, I think it's kind of important for everyone to do like and realize how like how much these kids know and how intelligent they are. I uh, I appreciate that. Yeah. Thanks for telling us that story because I really really wanted to get it out. I wish we could go even mm-hmm. deeper into it, yeah. but uh, we got to take a break. When we come back, we'll get a little bit of perspective on the Ice Dogs games coming up.